Black Community Jeff here, and I'm going to start a new little series. Though I'm not starting it on my own, I'm kind of stealing the idea. This is from Zep Pearl over his channel. He has been doing this series called The First One, The One You Never Forget. And I thought it was such a cool idea. I've been watching, he's been, you know, doing some of them. And the most recent one I just saw today, actually, when I did the video, I thought, you know, that is actually a kind of a neat idea. And I'm thinking maybe I should jump on board kind of use this as a thread idea um, because everybody has stories. We all have stories. We all have stories when we remember when we got into bands. And so that's really what I see this as, a time to tell stories, which is really what we do here in the VC is, uh, you know, we tell stories of how music has changed us, influences what we've got, why we got it, things like that. And in this case, it's really nostalgia because you're looking at things, you're looking at collections of bands, and then you decide to tell how you got into them. And, you know, and it's true. I think we find this to be true. And, you know, this obviously rings true with this type of story idea is it seems and maybe it's not always the case. But the band the, the album that we got into a band by tends to hold nostalgic value. So a lot of us may say this is our favorite album. But really what it is, is this is the album that got us into it. We probably listened to it a lot. And it therefore becomes nostalgically one of our favorite albums. It may not be the best album in the catalog. And we may all, you know, we could change and say, well, you know, yeah, that album got me into it. And I really love it. But, uh, and I'm really fond of it for nostalgic reasons. But I really think this is our best album. So it, 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 it's different for everybody. But I do think, I know for me at least, I'll speak for myself. The early years, the first, second album that I got into a band tend to still be what I consider my favorite albums. And, it, you know, it's it's weird like that. I know it's 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 just an emotional thing. Anyway, today we're going to be talking Accept. I don't know. The only reason I'm going to Accept is because I started looking through my collection and Accept was at the top of the list uh, in Ace. You know, I didn't give this a whole lot of thought because I saw his recent video and I thought, I'm going to do this. And I had some quiet time here uh, at the house. So I thought, well, let me just do this. So I'm just going to breeze real quick through my entire collection on vinyl in this particular case i didn't have to pull any cds because i pretty much have their entire catalog on vinyl all the studio albums except one and that's a more recent one from just a couple years ago but anyway except german metal band started in 1979 uh you know rock but not as metallic at this point <clears throat> I'm a rebel. This is one I recently picked up, so I showed this, you know, I don't know, six months ago now. Wow, time flies. Six, seven months ago, showed this one. Um, so, uh, okay, I'm going to, it's kind of tough, because, I. well, I'm not going to do like, you know, like he did, as far as having necessarily people guess. I discovered the band, and where I learned about the band versus where I discovered them. Um, this album here, Breaker, I never had it, but my cousin's brother had this. And we pulled it out and listened to it because of the song SOB and the vulgarities. And we used to laugh at it as children. Well, at this point, we were teenagers, of course. This would have been the early 80s. But still, it's to, to have an album that was that vulgar was just kind of... We used to laugh at it. But anyway, that's where I discovered it. But I never bought them, never got into them, never listened to them in my collection. Didn't even knew, know who they were aside from hearing them play on his player. Um, this is just a compilation I picked up. This is kind of like a best of albums prior to that. I got into the band here, Restless and Wild. This would, So it's really the, the album after that. So Now, the thing is, I don't remember... I don't remember how I discovered this. And probably me and my best friend at the time, I'm sure one of us discovered it. I don't know how. I don't think it was the Breaker Eye album because that was me and my cousin a year or so before. I don't know. Maybe I heard, maybe I remembered the name and said, hey, we need to check him out. I don't know. But we played this album so much, so much. That I would say, still to this day, probably what I consider like a high watermark. Even though I pretty much love their entire catalog, this is near and dear to my heart. Shortly after that, of course, Boss of the Wall came out. This one got probably, because to me, the Rest of Some Wild was really aggressive. This was a little bit more tame, but still had the accept sound. And so this album became a, a really strong favorite for quite a while. 
by the time I went into the military, this had come out. We had MTV videos for Midnight Mover, all of that fun stuff. And so, you know, to me, it was just as strong of an album. I know looking back now, it's kind of like, ah, they're starting to go. Uh, it's becoming a little more mainstream, but still absolutely love the album, uh, live album. And then, of course, the final album where Udo stepped aside. Uh, this, I don't know, I didn't know a whole lot about it. I wasn't listening to except quite as much at this point. The live album, Let's skip over that. And then Eat the Heat. Um, I don't, it, it was years before I even ever listened to this. Where, you know, new singer, American sound. It just wasn't the same. So I didn't spend as much time with that. So, But, but when this came out a couple years later, in the 93-ish or so, I did jump on board that fairly quickly and just fell in love with this album. Still a strong album for me. All of these were that. Death Row, just again, an instant favorite. I just, maybe it was just the fact that Udo was back. And then when Predator came out, I started seeing cracks again. And you know, we have Udo not singing all the album songs. I'm thinking something's going on here. This was pre-internet. We weren't following what was going on we didn't know who was singing the other songs or really paid much attention to that we could just tell i could just tell something wasn't quite right and then of course we know udo left again and then in comes the new singer former tt quick singer and um so i was a tt quick fan so i had no problems with that uh but yeah so when this came out we jumped on it and you know just renewed strength of a band, uh, you know, Udo went on with the solo stuff and put out solid, so consistently solid stuff that it wasn't like we were necessarily missing him in except because, and then they could go on with another singer. And we had two great bands and Udo was still doing that um, as we go on with Stalingrad. Now, the only album I think that I am missing by them is the, uh, the Chaos one that is between this era of blind rage and too mean to die somehow i to be honest there's some quirky songs on that album and i didn't i think at that point i wasn't into vinyl or whatever so i kind of missed out and then i went back and have bought other ones since getting into vinyl but haven't picked that up but i will one day i'm sure and uh and then this one you know i picked up when it came out and then this one i picked up last week or two which i showed in the previous video so except Restless and Wild, that's where I stepped in. Still one of my all-time favorite albums by them. Followed closely by Boss of the Wall and even Metal Heart. Those three albums to me are the trifecta, the trilogy of amazement of, and for me, the Accept catalog. That's it for this one. You like Accept, and if so, where did you jump on board? Share your stories below. I'll see you later. Rock on and rock hard.